is awesome. Ow! <laughs> How do we do this? You just ask, ask a question and go in it. Okay, cool. Well, I was thinking. I'm not answering that question. Sorry? No, go ahead. I was thinking. I'm not answering that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, go it's ahead. It's going to be difficult. <laughs> um, tell me about the first time that you were at Sundance, because this is my first time. Ah, this is your... okay. Uh, that's a great question, Jack. Um, I was here for, with a film called Tape Heads in 1986, I think it was. Nice. And I remember it being in the Egyptian theater watching Shock Corridor by Sam Fuller. Mm. And uh, my whole uh, perception of uh, films changed watching that film. And uh, I got to meet Sam Fuller oh, nice. uh, a couple of years later in Cannes and got to do a documentary on him. But it all started here at Sundance. What's your experience been here? It's crazy that we got accepted. I'm just excited to be here. And you've produced, a, uh, you've directed a film. I directed that was a film. produced by you. Oh right. Well, and executive uh, <laughs> produced. <laughs> That's right. Ali Sandler, Sandler, Sandler produced it. She did the work. That's I gave the, the money. Movie. Tell us about Hot Winter. Hot Winter, a film by Dick Pierre, yeah. is a 1980s porno about climate change. And ah, it's like been unearthed. It's been unearthed. Yeah. And it's shot all on VHS. And pretty much the premise is uh, this guy has a conscious film of the week. And this week, he's presenting one of the first films in American cinema to talk about global warming. Wow. Although some of the films are graphic, they've been removed for your viewing pleasure. Scenes have been removed, the sex scenes have been removed. So pretty much it's a 1980s porn about climate change without the sex. So it's a lot of bad acting without the sex. It's a lot of bad acting and bad filmmaking on yeah. purpose. I see, I've seen the film, uh, and yeah. I, I see the booms entering shots. Yes. Stuff. Yeah. That was intentional. It's also really fun to do a bad movie because, you know, there was one shot where, like, Janelle, our production designer's arm, is just in the background, and I was like, yeah. that's fun. Yeah, you just leave it in. Yeah, just leave it in. You know, there's no, no problem in the editing room. Yeah, just, no. you know, if someone's in a shot, it doesn't matter. Uh, cool. What about Marjorie Prime? I'm here for a film called Marjorie Prime as well, and uh, it's a, a film by Michael Amaretta. It's in the future, and a prime is a, a holographic uh, a representation of the person that you loved, when you most love them. So oh, wow. it yeah. opens with Lois Smith, who's a wonderful actor mm -hmm. in her 70s, who's portraying someone in their 80s. Uh, and her, her prime is John Hamm. No way. So that's her husband when he, uh, when he yeah. was 40. That's great. Can we see it? Um, what is the role that you had the most fun playing? I'd have to say Bull Durham, uh, yeah. because I met your mother on that film. and. Uh, and because it was baseball, and I had been an obsessive baseball fan my whole life. When I was a kid, I would dress up in my Mets uniform and turn the radio on, and I'd act out the entire game really? in my living room. I was just obsessed. And so when I got the chance to actually pretend to be a real baseball player, that was like off the hook, crazy great. And the, the character of Nuke is a lot more intelligent than you are. What was it like preparing for <laughs> someone? <laughs> is that driving you crazy? It'll be okay, we can pull it out first. No, you can't, that's too loud. So we'll talk like this for a while? Uh, you know, okay, it's your uh, turn now. Well, you know, talk about what it's like to audition to play my son and not get the part. Why, you, why the <laughs> fuck do you keep bringing this up, dude? We just literally, I don't even remember this that well. Are you sure it wasn't Miles? No, it was you. Okay, well, for the viewers See, at home. both have foggy memories. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Anyway. Huh? Okay, well, I auditioned once to be your son and I didn't get it, so that's a real fun story for everyone. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. I, I, yeah, and I'm not an actor. I'm, anymore, I'm so. just like, I bring it up because what does it do to a kid's psyche when he auditions? and doesn't get the part of, of his own, of who he is. Right? Yeah, that's great. So anyway, I, 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 I say that with Wonderful. compassion for you and... and that's awesome. Uh, and well, I'm glad we went from talking about that never to twice in two interviews today, so... <laughs> um, okay, next question. Um, what director uh, that you worked with was, like, what director did you enjoy working with the most? No doubt uh, it was Robert Altman. He taught me so much about not only filmmaking, about, but about how to be a human being on a movie set. Um, I think that's why actors loved him so much, is that he was, uh, he really uh, loved actors and loved you know, getting actors involved in the creativity of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, uh, he wanted more out of you than just to memorize your lines. He wanted 
whatever crazy ideas you had. And that didn't just stop with the actors too. If the craft service person had a good idea, it would be in the film. And so he would invite everyone, including the craft service people, mm -hmm. to dailies every night. So we'd have a, like a big really? dailies every night. And there'd be wine and there'd be food and, and, and you know, people would smoke joints and it was just, wow. it was just a wonderful creative environment to be in. And, and, and the idea that I was encouraged at the age that I met him to, to be told by someone like that, that he wanted to work with me and he wanted my opinions was something that really, I think, was, gave birth to me as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty fun. That sounds yeah. pretty cool. Uh, what's been the biggest challenge in, in, uh, in your experience dealing with uh, not only filmmaking, but uh, the h entering into that whole world of Hollywood? Well, I have to admit it's a little bit more fun <laughs> when you're not working with Hollywood, I think. Well, you also know the underlying Hollywood truth that when someone says a certain anything, it, 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 it might not be true at all <laughs> yeah well I, but i think i've learned now just to yeah. kind of like filter that out and just focus on what i like doing keeping projects going little small things like hot winter was something a while other things were in development just to kind of always have something to look forward to instead of waiting for other people to say yeah you can make this movie now congratulations thank you on, on getting into sundance thanks I, I love when you do things in your career before i did them in my career <laughs> well, it makes me very proud that's cool. I didn't make my first film until I was older than you. And you you've you? already made three. I, I was around 30... Which one? Two, 33, Bob Roberts, Bob Roberts 34. It's also a really good movie, so I have a little ground to make up. Well, you're, gonna, you're, you're doing great, kid. Thanks, you're man. doing great.